David? Thank you. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about AI. I'm sure you've heard a little bit about it today. You're going to hear more about it as time goes on. I think Elon Musk made this quote recently about where AI is heading, and it is moving forward very fast, a lot faster than anything we've ever seen before, because it learns from itself. I think that med tech that doesn't have it or isn't incorporating it in the next three to five years is going to be, it's going to be problematic. It's moving very, very quickly. So today I'm here to talk to you about AI-driven image-guided navigation in lung cancer. So we have a problem with lung cancer. I think we all know what the problem is. First of all, it's caught late. The later it's caught, the greater the deaths by the, by the cancer. It's interesting because you hear prostate, you hear breast, you hear colorectal, all about that. But when you add all those up, they don't equal the number of people dying from lung cancer. So it remains a problem. That's the first problem. The second problem is, even though this is happening, our ability to detect it and to diagnose it is also problematic. So if you look at this chart here, breast cancer has the highest detection. Why? People are compliant with breast cancer screening. We're working and we're get, getting better, but the numbers that we're dealing with today, the numbers that we're barely dealing with today for lung cancer, less than 6% of people who can have lung cancer detection actually get it. The good news is that number is going to go up. The bad news is when that number goes up, we have another problem. And that problem is how do we diagnose? So even though right now a million of the, of the 15 million are being detected, 250,000 are being diagnosed. So there's a big problem there. So when a nodule is detected, how is that handled? Two things, a non-suspicious finding, non finding, they send you home and they observe. They say, let's see where this thing goes. If it gets bigger, we'll deal with it. For a suspicious finding, you have two options. The first option is what's called CT-guided TTNA. It's very accurate. It's, it's not that expensive, but it's problematic because in about 25 to 30 percent of those patients, they have pneumothorax, the lung collapses, and they're already compromised. So what we're doing is we're moving towards a less invasive solution, which is airway bronchoscopy or a bronchoscopy biopsy. That's where you go down the airway, you weave yourself to the lesion, and when you get to the lesion, we biopsy the lesion. Less invasive, low risk, but very, very inaccurate. So we've been at it for a long time, airway bronchoscopy. It started with the bronchoscope. Problem with the bronchoscope is less than 50% diagnostic yield, because that means in less than 50% of the cases, they get to the lesion, right? And they get an accurate biopsy. So what was then invented? Electromagnetic, electromagnetic navigation, Varin, superdimension, Illumicite. You can see the diagnostic yield got better, but not dramatically better, 70%. So what entered the market then? Robotic platforms. The interesting thing about the robotic platforms is all things being equal, their diagnostic yield is about the same as electromagnetic navigation. Now what these two platforms did is they drove up the price. So the cost of a bronchoscopy, airway bronchoscopy, is very low. When you add the navigation and the robot platforms, they use proprietary consumables, so it drives the price up. The differentiator driving the numbers way up is intraoperative 3D imaging. And there's sort of two ways you can get that. One is a cone beam CT, which is a multi-million dollar uh, room, and another one is a 3D C-arm. In all those cases, the problem, you have two challenges. The first challenge is the first one, CT to body divergence. That means the preoperative CT that they're using to guide themselves to the lesion is inherently inaccurate when used interoperatively. So they routinely find themselves way off from where the lesion needs to be. The second challenge is confirmation and lesion. And if you can imagine, this is a screenshot from one of the uh, uh, new robots where the tool was almost two centimeters away from the lesion, and it becomes very difficult, first navigating to the lesion, and secondly, when you think you're at the lesion, getting the tool and lesion and getting the biopsy you have. It's very problematic. It becomes more problematic when you have a bronchoscope. Uh, it gets a little bit better with electromagnetic navigation, a little bit better with the robot. So 
I'm going to play you a quick video that shows you what our technology does, the body vision technology, and how it works. We are FDA cleared, we are CE marked, and we do have EU MDR. So we're in full commercial phase right now. Because you are unable to see exactly where the lesion is during the procedure, Body Vision's game changing technology provides real time interoperative 3D imaging using any conventional CR while allowing you to see the actual lesion and lesion location during the procedure. Precisely navigate to the lesion under augmented fluoroscopy. Visually confirm tool and lesion in multiple 3D planes prior to biopsy. And then under augmented fluoroscopy, biopsy with confidence, knowing that you see in real time that you are obtaining tissue samples from within the lesion. Clinical studies have demonstrated that tool and lesion confirmation prior to biopsy can result in a diagnostic yield approaching, if not exceeding, 90%. Lung vision, a breakthrough innovation in lung cancer diagnostics. doing. The AI is taking images, 2D images, a very short spin of 2D images from a 3D C arm, and it's creating three image sets for the doctor. First of all is an axial sagittal and coronal view fused with the pre-op CT doing the automatic correction of the lesion. Second is a 3D view of the lesion, so once the tool is at the lesion, you confirm that it's embedded in the lesion. And third, most importantly, is it's setting the quickest path to the lesion, and it's allowing the doctor with very low dose scans to guide themselves with images to the lesion. So, we're taking this, and we're giving you this. We're taking the most widely available imaging device in the operating room and we're turning it into the top of the line cone beam CT. And I think that's what you're gonna see AI do in this revolution coming up, especially in imaging, is taking existing imaging modalities and improving the performance of them and giving you more and more capability about what exists, thus reducing price. So, what are the results? You can take the lung vision system with any robotic navigation platform in any C arm, and we're delivering 94% and higher diagnostic yield. More importantly, we're taking any bronchoscope in any C arm, and we're dealing 80, 89 and higher percent diagnostic yield. So, where most of the world can't afford the top solution, we're giving that same superior diagnostic yield to what the whole world has. So, where are we as a company? Uh, in the last uh, 18 months, we've opened 36 countries. Most recently, we opened China. The rest of the world has no solutions. The robots aren't there. So we're bringing this to the rest of the world and to the US. We've seen very strong growth. By the end of 2024, we'll add another 67 uh, systems worldwide. We're validated with all the major imaging platforms. So any CR made by the big companies, we're validated with. And we're making great strides with our uh, software. So we're moving very fast with a small team. What's next for us? From diagnosis to treatment. The future of lung cancer is targeted therapeutics. We're on that. Because of our accuracy, because of our speed, we'll be helping to deliver targeted therapeutics to the rest of the world. In addition, here's what we know about the AI. We can teach it to navigate to other soft tissue. So continuing to improve the performance uh, of C arms and give that soft tissue imaging that the whole world needs but can't afford with CT or with cone beam CT. So if you'd like to learn more, you can uh, click on the QR code and you can learn more about the company and I'll be here for the next couple of days. Happy to answer questions, but we're in a, we're in a, a, a round right now to uh, increase our commercialization. Thank you.